Hi, so I just want to say hello and welcome to my new channel. This is kind of the first one that I'm doing. My other channel is actually my dog's channel, where it's just literally home videos of him being silly or cute or adorable because I just think he's just amazing and he's my whole world. Anyway, so what this channel's about is more about me personally. So how I live day to day with multiple chronic illnesses and disabilities, but it's also about my curly girl journey. Um, so how I discovered the curly girl method, how I was transitioning, what products worked for me, what products didn't work for me. And I'll also touch on things like beauty, um, living like day to day, um, sort of things like things like you shouldn't ask a disabled person and even some things that might not be quite so nice uh, in terms of the negative sides of being a disabled person in 2020. Um, so I'm hoping to cover quite a few things as I go along. I am very new to this. I'm no video editor, as you can probably work that out already. Um, any advice along the way is always appreciated. Um, I am, uh, oh blimey, I'm 32, uh, currently 33 in April 2020, and I live in the UK with my mum at the moment. I am a survivor of multiple um, uh, domestic relation, domestic abuse relationships I think that's the right word multiple cases of abuse and sexual assaults etc um, and I do advocate a lot for that and I'm trying to cu currently use that in order to do good for others so I'm currently also training to be a voluntary counsellor so that I can help other survivors like me heal and recover from traumatic events now, going back to a bit about me, because that's a little bit of a bummer, but it is something I'm probably going to touch on at some point, with, which, of course, I will set trigger warnings so that if it's something that you'd rather give a miss, you can just keep going and just ignore it. So, a bit more about me. I mean, apart from the curls, as you can tell, I have got quite a few of them. Now, a year ago, this is not what my hair looked like. My hair was very frizzy. My hair was it almost looks straight because I used to brush it which if you are somebody that has curly hair and you actually look after your hair very well you're probably cringing but everybody cringes at that there was this one time I used a brush um, and I only now ever brush my sh my hair in the shower which is a my first video that's coming up soon so um, other things that I love to uh, get involved with is uh god my brain's gone I'm so sorry see I'm gonna be authentic as ever because I can't edit everything because quite frankly you're not gonna get the full me experience I'm not sure if that sounds good or not anyway so some of my hobbies for example I'm a big gamer I do mostly um, play on console now but I did originally start on the Atari ST playing Dungeon Master and Dungeon Master 2 Chaos Strikes back Yes, I'm an 80s child. I was born in 1987, although I didn't see much of the 80s because I was quite young. Um, I am an 80s baby, so I was raised on very kind of old-fashioned, nerdy stuff. Um, currently, I'm now using an Xbox because, frankly, uh, with my coordination dyspraxia and my medical con yeah, medical conditions, I do struggle to use the keyboard and mouse, and I, I, it's become more helpful to use controllers rather than keyboard and mouse. Although I know you can kind of do that with some games, but games like World of Warcraft, for example, which was something I originally played from vanilla, by the way, everybody, I used to play from vanilla, um, up until the point where they released the Mists of Pandaria, and then I thought, oh my God, I did complete it in the end, but oh, after that, I just really didn't like that game. Um, so apart from gaming, I love music. I'm very into my heavy metal, but my guilty pleasure is actually Shakira. And sort of following on from that, Shakira is actually the reason that I learned Spanish. Um, 
one of my biggest hobbies and favourite things to do is to learn languages. Um, I went to university to study languages, to progress my language learning further. So um, originally I, oh gosh, the first language I ever learned other than English was a little bit of Italian. And then I moved on to French at, at high school or secondary school. It varies where you're from and what that's called. So I'm not going to get too confusing with that but between 11 and 16 I was at secondary school and I learned French turned out I loved learning French and I was basically the uh, vocabulary book in class most of the time because I used to remember everything so it was kind of quite quickly my intentions were to go to university to pick up more French more languages and keep that going I did try to do a German GCSE, which is basically, I think it's like your SATs. I might be wrong, though. I do apologise. I'm not sure what it translates to in North America or other parts of the world. So I do apologise if I'm not getting that right. But unfortunately, because I was literally the only person in my year group who wanted to take German for my final days of high school, um, I wasn't permitted to do it unless I wanted to go to after school classes which I do to do to this day don't understand why I didn't try that because I think that would be a would have been a really good thing to do I still don't really speak German um I went to university started learning um, more French I picked up Spanish I did an intensive course and also spent some time living in Spain which has captured a part of my heart forever Um, And I also picked up Italian and Portuguese as well. I did drop Portuguese after a year because I did actually find it was actually bizarrely more difficult than I thought it was going to be. And I I can still understand it. And if I've got it in front of me, I can read it. But to sort of string off a sentence at you, it's it's quite hard for me to do that. Um, And since university, because I graduated in 2009, so obviously I'm a lot older than I look, um, no, nah, I'm, I'm only bragging there. <laughs> um, I So in 2016 or 2017, I think it was, I began to learn Japanese. And I've been doing that for a couple of years now, but I am going to continue with that at some point in the future. Um, at the moment, I'm just kind of having a break because my health has actually taken a bit of a bad turn. And I've also been learning um, some other languages like Russian, um korean and german on the duolingo app so i do recommend you try that and that's not a paid for sponsor thing or anything that's just me saying stuff if you if you fancy learning something new that's a really good app it's really helps and i'm now recognizing a lot of russian characters in games that i play for example the metro games um I'm waffling, I know. Other things that I love, I love Xbox, Xbox, the X-Men. They're my favourite superhero franchise. I love Wolverine the most. I have a tattoo of him on my leg. That's probably for another video. Um, And I really, really, really enjoy the Marvel Universe. I'm sorry, everybody, but I am Marvel over DC always. Batman has never really been a thing for me, but we can always have an argument about that in the comments if you like. (laughs) Um, Other than this, I do love RPGs. I love fantasy and sci-fi genre. I am a Trekkie over a Star Wars fan. I do like Star Wars too, but not the first three, but, you know, the episode first three, not the first three. Anyway, that's always a bit confusing. But you get my drift there, at least. I hope you do. I am... Gosh, I love Disney. I used to love Little Mermaid. um, And I will hold on to that memory of loving that film so much. But um, with the way I am now, I don't like it quite as much because my views have definitely changed. Um, Yeah, why would anyone want to change for the sake of someone falling in love with them? So it's like, I don't get that logic. So now my favourite Disney film is Frozen. I am a proper geek. Um, Just to put it out there already, I'm also a a proud member of the LGBT community. Um, I don't really identify as anything, but the closest thing that you probably want if you want to put a label on it, it's pansexual. I don't really have a preference on gender or what genitals somebody has. It's just if I like someone, I like someone, that's it, job done sort of thing. And, you know, something like that comes later. Um, I do 
identify in somewhat with being a woman, but I don't necessarily identify all the way. It's, to be honest, that's also, again, I don't really worry about it too much because otherwise I just get frustrated because no label seems to quite fit the description. So I think, you know what, screw the labels. My name is Penny. Um, and I'd rather you just call me by that <laughs> if you don't mind. Um, so a bit more about my illnesses and why I am a spoonie, really. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. So I have multiple illnesses. So if I, I'll do my best to label them all now, label them, list them all now. So I have a condition called hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or known as Ehlers-Danlos syndrome type 3. This is a connective tissue disorder which affects the collagen, which is basically the very building blocks of every single cell in every part of our body. Um, as a result, this means that my ligaments, instead of being strung tightly like a rubber band, they're more like wet spaghetti and yeah very prone to tearing not being stable enough to hold my joints in place so therefore it can cause dislocations muscle pain um i i twist my ankles on a regular basis um to be honest i've done it so much now that they are floppy they, the ligaments there just don't really exist i have multiple problems like things like gynecological reasons which could be linked to my eds and bladder and ibs and things like that um, in addition to EDS, I also have fibromyalgia, which is a chronic pain condition that affects all over the body and also has a lot of overlapping symptoms. I also have a condition called POTS and I still for the life of me cannot pronounce that name, but it is fairly newly diagnosed. So as I'll learn about it, I'll talk to you about it as well. Um, I have obstructive sleep apnea, which basically means I stop breathing at night. Great fun, but... Fortunately, our brain's mechanism when this sort of thing happens is to wake us up. But as a result of our brain waking us up and pulling us out of REM sleep or a deep sleep, this causes our brain to lose oxygen. This also naturally, when you wake up, if you just have disturbed sleep, you're not going to sleep as well. Um, you need to hit those REM cycles in deep states and things like that to, in order to get rest so on and so forth sleep is important guys we still don't fully understand the workings of it but sleep is paramount i am also a chronic insomniac um so getting to sleep in the first place would be a bloody blessing let alone with the mask on it's tough other than this i've also got a condition called many airs disease which is kind of a connected tissue disorder as well but not really it affects um it can affect one or both ears i have mostly in this ear i'm not sure about my left side to be honest um so many ears disease is basically i to be honest i've forgotten what it is now it's an inner ear disorder so it affects the balance system that all of us will have built into our ears um it's how we basically can work out what is up what is down if we're turning if we're bent over if we're bent up all sorts of things or upside down it's basically the way our body tells our brain where we are and what we do like what, what way up our bodies are it's quite fascinating but unfortunately due to the damage of many ears this ear has no balance system whatsoever it's completely damaged it's irreparable you can't unfortunately take that stuff out and replace it or anything because it's you know the organ inside your ear is about the size of my fingernail it's very tiny um so i do get um, a lot of vertigo dizzy spells i have problems with involuntary eye movements which is also known as nystagmus um, I've got the most terrible balance, which could also be linked to having dyspraxia and Ellis Danlos as well, you know, just for fun, because it's, you know, I'm greedy. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I found that funny. <laughs> and that was a really gay laugh. Sorry, I didn't mean that in offensive terms. Sorry, not a gay laugh. Well, I mean, like, silly laugh. Sorry. Um, so sorry if that comment just offended anyone. Um... Where am I? Yes, um, so many years is a bit of a pig. It's I'm in kind of a remission stage at the moment, but my ears have basically become I've basically become a human barometer. So my body overall head to toe will actually react in accordance to air pressure and heat and cold and things like that, which is quite handy, but at the same time 
not very nice. So when we have low pressure, like if it's going to get windy or colder, my ears will play up. So I'll get a lot more vertigo attacks and I'll be very off balance. My brain fog will kick in. My pain levels will go up. It's a fun joy thing to sort of live through every day. And I'm always living in chronic pain, even though I may not necessarily look it. I am always in a significant amount of pain. Um, I've learned over the years to become quite a good actress at this. Um, so generally, the only people that know how much pain I'm in are people that are quite close to me. There's like maybe two people in the entire world that know. So, yeah. Like, and that apparently there's telltale signs. I don't know officially what they are, but yeah. Um, other illnesses that I have is uh, asthma, which is quite common, but is actually quite serious. We do need to take asthma more seriously. I have multiple allergies. We don't know exactly what, but we do know that some of my triggers are things like cat fur, um, hay fever sort of things, pollen, dust, certain perfumes, daffodils. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Yeah, daffodils are horrendous. Um, even lush and um, like nail bars and things like that. Anything can make my nose flare up and I get sinusitis quite f frequently. So I have to take a permanent like nasal spray twice a day, every day for the rest of my life, including antihistamines, just to keep that at a reasonable or accept acceptable to live with level. It's great fun. Um, in addition to this, I also have some mental health disorders. I have depression and anxiety, which are two of the most common disorders to have. But I also have complex post-traumatic stress disorder and borderline personality disorder as well. So it basically means I am very emotionally intense. So compared to somebody who's normal, I'll use the term lightly, um, if an event happens that happens to be maybe upsetting, they might maybe be a little bit angry but generally they'll be okay whereas me in that situation the world is ending so my, my reactions to things can be a lot stronger and a lot more intense um which sounds like oh couldn't you just switch it off unfortunately i have no control over that i can't help it i don't like it but i do my best to kind of make i have more understanding of why my brain works the way it does and why my why I feel the way I do and what's kind of led up to me getting that diagnosis and why that exists I'll get back to that again in another video um but other than that really I mean that's more or less all you guys really need to know about me I do have a tendency to ramble a lot so I will try and keep things short and sweet I'm hoping to learn editing because frankly I've never done this before but I would rather be able to cut bits if I've made any mistakes while I'm talking and also especially where I'm doing some curly hair washing tutorials and things like that you don't really need to spend 20 minutes which like 20 minutes roughly out of the entire video that I've recently done out of the 60 minutes is just basically me washing and we can speed speed that up just in between me talking and I think that would look better but at the moment I'm still looking for an app that's suitable to do that on a mobile phone because I don't have all this fancy technology that some guys do. And to be honest, I don't know. It was something I'd like to learn maybe later if anything takes off. I mean, to be honest, I'm not expecting much to come from this. I just feel, as someone that has naturally curly hair, there's not a lot of representation for people who are actually disabled. And I do find hair washing to be one of the most difficult and fatigue-triggering tasks that I have to do. Unfortunately, I now only wash my hair once to twice a week max. But it is a challenge and I do often need a long rest after I've done my hair or had a bath or shower because it is very, very tiring for me. Even talking for this long has knackered me out. But I just wanted to say welcome. Thanks for tuning in. I am going to sign off now because, I, as I said, I have a tendency to ramble and I never shut up. Hopefully you'll get used to that <laughs> or hopefully I'll stop it. Um, but thanks very much for join in if you want to subscribe to see what i get up to that'd be awesome feel free to share it with a friend likes and dislikes and any advice you have for starting off at this sort of thing or advice to cope with curls whilst being disabled or anything at all or you have any questions just pop them in the comments below and i'll do my best to answer everyone so it's going to be a good night from me because it's now 20 past 11 and i'm getting quite sleepy so ta for now bye